Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to Russell Rock with Rick Connor. What the F was that entire freaking promo about? Mark Kalbacher. She's like the James Ellsworth of women. And Corey Castle. I look like Paul London and Brian Kendrick mixed. <laughs> hey everybody, what's going on? Thank you very much for joining us for another episode of Russell Rock. It's Rick Connor and Mark Kalbacher. Corey Castle is not here. No Corey Castle today whatsoever. So we're safe. No puns busy. going on today. He was too busy winning championships. Yeah. Like, come on, <laughs> I was I was hoping he would come on so we could see the belt. Yeah. Um, yeah, Corey Castle won the uh, No Limits Championship at DCW over this weekend. It was uh, it was pretty cool. Um, it was just a uh, kind of a serious. I mean, I think he was gonna you know win it anyway. Uh, I don't know too much about the behind the scenes stuff, but. Uh, uh, the guy that was holding the belt, um, somebody in his family came down with COVID, so obviously he couldn't be there. And, um, you know, uh, he's at home taking care of his family and trying to protect us all from getting the uh, the stupid pandemic crap that's still going around somehow. Um, but, uh, yeah, he uh, he had to relinquish the belt because it hasn't been defended in over a year. Due wow. to everything being, you know, everything being shut down and everything like that. So uh, he, he gave up the belt. And, uh, uh, yeah, they, they kind of had this little mini tournament of, uh, two, uh, triple threat matches and then a singles match with those two winners. Of course, my cat picks now to go nuts. Um, I'm going to take care of that one second. Jesus Christ. That's just going to continue to be a hassle. Oh, I would talk sad. about it, but I don't know what happened. All I know is Corey posted the picture of, let me see. I, I got to stop dropping my laptop because my camera is like off center now. Um, yeah, all I know is I saw the picture on Instagram and winning the championship and then him canceling as we were going to do the show today. <laughs> apparently he can't get a signal or now he's traveling or. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's uh, he's in Florida visiting family and uh, we were going to I mean, do it. How weird is that, dude? My camera's like off center. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's it's weird doing this double shot thing here. Let me see if I can go back to what we usually do. All right. Something like this. It's a little bit better, I think. I don't know. I dropped my laptop a couple of days ago, and now everything's like on an angle. <laughs> oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. But uh, yeah, man, Cordy Castle, new DCW No Limits champion. So congrats to him, wherever he may be. He's flying over the Mid-Atlantic right now, or some, the mid uh, Midwest, whatever the hell. I don't know how to get to Florida. But uh, yeah, man. Where are we <laughs> Where the hell are the... you talking about? <laughs> I don't know. It's probably a straight line. I don't know. Whatever. He's he's in America. I don't know. Sure. It's only like a gradual curve. <laughs> it goes from wherever he was in Florida through Atlanta through DC into us. Yeah. Or out. <laughs> Probably like the easiest trip you can make in an airplane, and I'm like, no, I think you have to go around Iowa somewhere, don't you? Don't, don't get me wrong. I don't know about when when you guys wrestle, but when I was, let I me mean, know if that's too loud too. Actually, the window since uh, my landlords don't want to fix my air conditioning and oh, no. are, are wondering why they haven't gotten their rent this month. Um, <laughs> which we call like when I used to be an engineer. Uh, I could be going to somewhere as simple as like Atlanta and somehow to get a cheaper flight, I'd have to fly all the way into like Denver before I can like fly back to Atlanta. I'm like, wait, you guys can pay an extra 150 bucks for me to go to a straight flight. <laughs> I got to sit in, in Minneapolis for four hours before I go. Yeah. <laughs> it is crazy how they do that. Uh, it's like, why is there a layover all the way over there when it's should be just a straight line? I don't know. I don't know why they do it, when, but you know, it's pretty much when you get kayak or any of those, and you want to fly spirit. We're gonna dump you in Dallas just so you can. Go. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> why? <laughs> All right, let's get to some uh, some wrestling chat, shall we? Um, there was some stuff going on that uh, it, it feels weird. We're in like the middle of next week, but we still got to talk about things like Kenny Omega being a triple time uh, champion now since he beat Rich Swan for the Impact title. Um, and it's still relevant today because now apparently Andrade wants to challenge for that belt. Uh, I don't know where Andrade is. I heard this happened in like AAA or something like that. He uh, he just popped on and did a quick promo. 
I I saw the clickbait for it and I didn't know if it was real to actually watch it. But <laughs> I'm sorry, man. Between Wrestle Talk and a couple of the other those garbage sites, yeah. Even Wrestle it was WrestleMania and there's another one. They're all like garbage. And because I watched What Culture and I actually watched WWE and AEW clips, all yeah. this like garbage <laughs> just pops up all over my screen. Um, yeah, I heard Andre challenge them. Uh, I mean, this this is really good for wrestling, especially if you're not a WWE fan. And you want to learn what's out there. Like people don't understand how big this is that Kenny Omega now holds three belts in three different federations, and he's he's not a huge name. He's not a Moxley, mm-hmm. you know. But to the Uber Uber, like I'm sorry, I know like five geeks just got mad. Like Uber <laughs> Uber fans know know enough of him to maybe check out AAA or maybe go over yeah. and check out Impact, you know, because Impact, you know, their ratings still haven't been that great, and the only time it is good is when, when Omega shows up on there. So it, this is, like, bigger than it, it, it. I know WWE is pretending like nothing's going on, but this is bigger than they get because what it is is now you've got a group of federations kind of banding together to produce content and try to steal fans away and we'll get to it. And, uh, raw is really helping people to <laughs> the bounce because how bad, how bad that show is. Yeah. It, it's got awful, man. It's, it's, uh, okay. it, it's, it's night and day. You have SmackDown raw and then NXT is some kind of weird in between where like some of the storylines and wrestling's old school NXT and the rest of it's raw. Mm-hmm. And it's it, I'm having a hard time now even watching NXT because once those storylines start kicking in, I don't want to watch the show anymore. I don't, like, I, I don't care about what's her name, uh, the one girl in the way, and how she's in love with Dexter Loomis. And, yeah, I don't know what that is. And now the dude, uh, oh, what's his name, L.A. Knight is getting involved in that. And, like, it's like I don't, I don't care. I just <laughs> – I want the old, like, 1980s-style, like, wrestling they were doing on air. I want to yeah, see Walter know. versus Ciampa again. I want to see yeah. <laughs> Kyle O'Reilly versus like you know Finn Balor again. I don't want to see all this garbage that's going on here. Yeah, it was um, it was something to look forward to every takeover, where you saw you know so many different mat like they would have five matches and every single one you're like oh my god I can't wait for that I can't wait for that this is going to be great that match is going to be great and now it's like okay you got uh, you know. Leon Ruff versus somebody like it's like oh, okay it'll be good I guess but you know they, it's they nothing usually, really to look forward to. They usually end up being good matches like I can't with the exception mm-hmm. I think the the only match that fell flat in the last I don't know how many takeovers was what Regina Gonzalez and uh or I was I think I got her name right that time I always forget Raquel. Gonzalez Raquel, Raquel. 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 I don't know why I yeah. love the woman too her and Dakota Kai I love that they didn't break them up I like that they still mm-hmm. have them together. Um, her versus Rhea Ripley was probably the biggest bust out of the, the last so many matches. The, the matches will be still good on TakeOver. The problem is now I'm having trouble being invested in those matches because the storylines are so bad and so poorly written. And it's like watching – it's just like watching Raw all over again. And it's like I can't, I can't get through it. And it's this weird thing where SmackDown and Raw – are absolute night and day and even the bad storylines on smackdown because the show's only two hours long they they go by so quickly whereas raw you can watch bad segment after bad segment after bad segment and then there's lily and i don't even know what the hell that is yet because i thought she was like some kind of acolyte to the fiend and now the fiend's gone and now there's some weird doll that looks like the spoon from toy story like <laughs> laughing in the screen i don't i don't know what's going on <laughs> Yeah, uh, I have no idea what the Lily thing. I it's I mean sure it's creepy, but where the hell do you go from? I mean, this this looks like another Perry Saturn with Moppy situation. Like, I, yeah. where do you go with it? Like, what happens? Um, and uh, you know, Raw like you were saying, Raw and SmackDown are so night and day. To me, it's the point where I watch SmackDown and I'm going, oh my god, this is great. Wrestling is great. I can't wait to go watch more wrestling. And then Raw happens, and I'm like, I never want to see this crap again for the rest of my life. Like it just happened last night, and I'm like, oh god, I do, I got to do Wrestle Rock today because 
And like, what? Like, it, it just drains the life out of me, and well, I don't want to do anything to do with wrestling because we're all. Well, that's the hard thing too, because we we've always been like the like that comedy, like try to stay positive type show. And yeah. every now and then, like WWE did it. I think it was like two. Or, well, Matt was still on the show. I remember we had that one. It was like almost a year of just bad show after bad show, and we're trying to do a show. And you, Matt, you can just see him like boiling on the other side because he just wanted to rage about how bad the product was and we're like trying to be like hey guys like yeah. laugh at it and, and we're sitting in the same, same situation now because you, you sit there and you got smackdown where you have daniel bryan's last match on on smackdown with roman reigns and then you have seth rollins tied into that because he still has a problem with cesaro but cesaro is now you know hanging with with you know daniel bryan and he's going after the belt and then you even got they're going into like they even know how to tie in stuff where they show shinsuke nakamura and he's like i think Daniel Bryan will win, and then he leans in and goes, I want a match. Like, mm-hmm. little things like this where they're making the, the secondary title, which people keep forgetting this. Like, even though it's Roman Reigns, that is not the WWE title. That is the Raw title they built for Brock Lesnar. Mm-hmm. It's more exciting to want to see what's going on with that title than Bobby Lashley, and it's no fault of Bobby Lashley's. It's no fault of Drew McIntyre or whoever else is fighting for it. It's just writing. It's just really bad writing, and – and constant distraction finishes and constant like like I, I don't know like like SmackDown is like a very tight show and like I said, even the bad one. Like I'm I'm over the tag team division in SmackDown. Like I'm over everything that's going on there. I, I don't yeah. care if Rey Mysterio and his kid win ever. <laughs> yeah. I I'd rather see Otis and and uh Chad Gable win it because why did both of them turn heel again if they're still not even winning anything? Yeah. Uh, it's funny, like Daniel Bryan was talking about how many people he would love to see go to New Japan, and he brought up Otis. And he's like, Otis is good, and nobody sees it because he's buried in this tag team where it's kind of like half a comedy gimmick. And he and now, especially with him face, like people were saying he could be like a Vader style person, like a big Ben, ben Vader style, but he's buried in this weird tag team that nobody really cares about because nobody cares about the tag team division. It's and like I said, and it's no fault of the other wrestlers there in the tag team division's fault. No. It's no. all writing. It's all, you know, like like they've been saying. Everybody else has been saying. Like it seems like the people writing these shows are writing to just please Vince McMahon instead of writing to please the fans. And everybody knows Vince doesn't like tag teams, so there's no, you know, there's no effort put into the tag team division. It's just this endless cycle of three to five tag teams always wrestling each other over and over again, mm. and it sucks because. Especially SmackDown, they have a lot of really talented guys, and it's the same guys wrestling over and over again. And it's like then there's no interest. I mean, then you have Monday, and this is what I wanted to get into. They open the show with AJ and almost in a new day, and I'm like, all right, here we go. Maybe Raw is finally getting back to the way it was because it was this really fun tag match. They- <laughs> <laughs> she just, just Jesus Christ. <laughs> This little monster right here. Dear how God. She, how old is she? Uh, four months. She's four she months just, old. Just lost off the chair at your, bo- your backboard. <laughs> oh, my God. The only thing I don't like is I don't like how they're making AJ like the fall guy and he's getting beat up a lot. Mm-hmm. But uh, I, I do. They're handling almost as well as they can for how limited he is. I mean, he like. And the sad part is I was watching, I was like, this guy, he's had two matches, and he's and then you watch a couple hours later, he's better than Lana. <laughs> and Lana's been in WWE for what, like six years? Something like that, yeah. That's and, the truth. And it's like this guy, like they I mean, don't get me wrong, he's also working with Xavier Woods and Kofi. But he's yeah. he's going slightly slower than he should, but he's you know, he's not hurting anybody, still putting on big moves. And then, you know, AJ doing the, the the phenomenal forum off his shoulders. I was like, I was all in. I was like, yeah, man, let's go. And then the next storyline, I'm like, and I hate WWE again. Like, <laughs> Yeah, uh, none of it made any sense. It was it was like they started off so strong. That's <sighs> ripping my headphones off. Jesus, why do I let her down here? <laughs> um, yeah, they started off so strong, and it was just like a gradual slope just heading straight down. Uh, because ended with that 
weird Bobby Lashley and uh, uh, Braun Strowman thing where McIntyre got involved. And McIntyre got involved because somebody else got involved in his match before. He's tired of getting distracted and then he went out and distracted somebody. Like, none of it made any sense. It was just worse and worse and worse as the show went on. And not only and that, all right. Not only that, right? Who's the bad guy, right? Is Bobby the bad guy? <laughs> I don't know. Is Braun Strowman the bad guy? Because at the end, Drew McIntyre runs in there and clips Bobby Lashley without him looking, and I'm supposed to think he's a, a hero. Mm -hmm. I'm supposed to think he's a good guy. Like, dude, WWE with their twisted, hey, let's make everybody some kind of like watered down Stone Cold, not understanding it wasn't Stone Cold, Stone Cold doing those dirty tactics. It was Stone Cold himself that we rooted for. Yeah. Like, you can't do that with every fit, and I'm just tired of it. I, I'm just, it, it's just bad. And then you break up the hurt business, make them a separate tag team, make them lose three weeks, and then you break them up. Like it is. <laughs> it's just it's fly by night, like seat of their pants. Uh oh, you better watch it. Jesus Christ! <laughs> it's like they just she's on a, she's on a roll today. Uh, did you do a bunch of cocaine before you came down here? Jesus, cat. <laughs> Oh my god. Sorry for anyone that's listening to the audio and not watching the video. I have a crazy kitten that's climbing literally climbing the walls behind me and it's and tugging on my headphone cords and everything else. But um yeah, it's it's just it's like they write what they want to write every week and they don't care if it doesn't match up with what happened last week. Like we saw it with Charlotte Flair getting suspended one week and then coming back the next week for uh, and just just coming back in like nothing ever happened and now right. she's added to a a title match it's like what 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 nobody's planning anything there's 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 nothing planned like they'll just write something for this week and just whatever happens next week they'll write something completely new just completely that's when that's it. when i checked out a i checked out a raw like was mm -hmm. was that scene alone because you have sonar sony deville who i thought she was the assistant to the GM and she was mainly on SmackDown. Now she's like wearing a red suit. So I guess she's the raw assistant GM. I don't, I don't get it. Shows up. What, what's the storyline? Like, cause we all know she's like, I, I don't know if they're what they're doing. Cause we all know she's gay. Are they going to play some really bad storyline where she's in love with Charlotte? And that's why Charlotte's getting all this. If they do that, I'm, I'm going to flip because <sighs> I, I can't, I'm sorry. I know a lot of people like hear me complain. I can't deal with Charlotte Flair anymore. I can't deal with no matter what she gets put in the title picture. They have already proven that she does not she does not move the needle whatsoever when she's on the screen. Yeah. The only the only female that moves the needle is Becky Lynch, and until she comes back, I don't understand this this constant focus on a wrestler that. And now they're bringing reality into the storyline, like when. Uh, What's your call? Rhea Ripley came out and she's like, why are you even here? No one likes you. Because now there's, <laughs> big, there's this big rumor that she doesn't get along with anybody in the back. Mm. It's like everybody's tired of her constantly being in the title picture and everybody else has to wrestle Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler for like 45 times a week. Like it's, I, I don't get it, dude. I don't, it's the same thing. Like they're, I guess Vince McMahon doesn't care about the women's division either. So they just create content just so they're on the screen and then they're gone. You know, mm -hmm. it's it's yeah. it's been rough, man. It's been rough. It's it's a shame because then you have AEW that's doing very well. Like mm -hmm. you can hate it or love it, like it, at least it's an entertaining show. Mm -hmm. Like they they do their little parlay, which was like cool to see Sean Spears actually talk for the first time, and I don't know how long. And uh, you know, Jericho and MJF killed it, absolutely killed it. You, you got this crazy thing with Kenny Omega and. Eddie Kingston and John Moxley going on. There, there's so much going on over there. And then Miro, the whole thing where he destroyed uh, uh, Kip Sabian. Yeah. He destroys him. And then he's just hugging him while he's all beat up. I forgive you. And he's just patting his head. Just like really like cool, like stuff that you're used, like that you want to see him wrestling. And then you watch WWE and it's like content created, content created, con whether it's good or bad, just co create content created. The Fiend is gone. Now you got, like I said, Alexa Bliss is like now some girl that was bullied all her life in high school or something like that. And her imaginary friends now, this magical doll that she created through, through the Fiend's powers. I don't, I don't get it. I don't understand it. <laughs> 
And poor Mansoor or Mansoor, oh however God. I even say that guy's name. I he was forty nine and zero, and then the second that he gets to the main roster, they completely destroy his undefeated streak. How do you do? And that? didn't even mention it. Didn't even mention it. How do you and do? It, that? It, it, because because all the all the uh, the the wins he chalked up were on like uh, NXT or not even NXT, but it'd be like. 205 Live and Main Event and all this other stuff, and nobody knew about it. He had the biggest undefeated streak in so long, and it was just completely done. And then they just blew it off for a, a Sheamus disqualification with uh, Umberto Del Rio, or whatever his name is. Carrillo. 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 I, whatever it is. I'm going to set Alberto Del Rio. <laughs> uh, he's in hot water again or something. I don't even want to get into him. Guy's a psychopath, uh, man. Yeah. How, how hard that guy's falling. It's ridiculous. Um, yeah, I don't know, dude. I, I don't I don't know what's going on in Raw. I, I and, they, and you constantly hear that Vince McMahon's one tearing up the scripts, rewriting them, and all. It's like, he can't be doing this. I can't believe this is Vince McMahon. And if it is, why isn't anybody talking about maybe it's time for him to step down? Why is no one, like, like at the balls to, like, Talk to Vince and be like, "Look, man, we're tanking hard. Like, we need to take it in the direction." Is there like there has to be like a board of directors that he answers to? Like, I know he's the the owner of the company and stuff, but I mean, it, doesn't there have to be somebody that like, hey, you know, we're we work for this company and we're we're we have money invested and you're tanking the company. Like somebody has to look at this and just go stop tearing up the scripts the day of the show because nobody's nothing makes sense. Nobody's watching the show. He just keeps doing their quarterly reports and because they got bought. The WWE Network got bought by the Peacock Network, and they have deals in like different countries. They're they're, they're basically set up to make more money than they ever had. So like yeah. all these people, all these board of directors, all these like high end stockholders. They don't. They're not watching the product. They they don't know how badly the product is going. They they just see the numbers money wise. Like they they that's all they're seeing is the actual income that's coming in. They're not seeing that like the show how bad the show is. They they're not seeing the fact that like fans are leaving in droves and going to AEW or AAA or Impact or whoever else is out there. Now there's a rumor that after them kicking Mickey James out, they're actually thinking about doing an all women's division. After she was the one who begged them for years to do that. Yeah. I I, I don't know what's happening. And then like you've had all the firings. Um, like you remember you were mentioning Mickey James, and then a whole bunch of other people got fired as well. And now they're bringing back people like Jinder Mahal um and putting him on on, on main event with uh that that monster what what is her name Inda Sheer, or Sheer Inda Sheer, uh, it's this like monster tag team uh, that was uh, they were on they were part of that India show the superstar spectacle or spectacular yeah. or whatever that was called, and, and and you had on main event you had Jinder Mahal versus Jeff Hardy, two former WWF champions WWE champions and WWE they, WWE. nobody knows <laughs> about it because it's on main event I'm like. Whatever, WWF champions. You know what I'm talking about. Like, I, it just uh, didn't seem to make any sense. And they're bringing Eva Marie back. Like, what is happening? What the hell is happening? Why? You're firing people and then you're hiring people? From what I know, like, she's I, been I just, hired. I just don't understand it. From what I know, she was hired months ago and it's just been sitting on the shelf and they just didn't know how to bring her back. And it's like, oh, now that we released all these girls that weren't even on TV anyway, uh, we're going to bring this girl on. And it's like, oh, okay. So th the four girls that you fired and three of them were super talented <laughs> like you didn't put them on tv but now you're going to put this girl that was so atrocious people would turn the television off when she was on the screen yeah and she's she's an 11 she's that hot and people couldn't stand her on the television like <laughs> like, like I, I don't get it either i don't know like she's nice to look at sure but i mean that only goes so far like they're gonna put her back in the ring. She barely wrestled when she when she was in, her, in the company in the first place. I don't understand. Is it is it just the hotness factor? Is that the only reason she has a job? Because that sucks. Well, yeah, it sucks. But look at it, dude. It's just it's business, man. Like people yes. people can do all this stuff. Like it's not fair. It's not. 
you know, they don't, they had the woman, they, they messed her up. And for some reason now all she does is get beat up. By, they had Mandy Rose. They were pushing her as the next one. She's stunning. She's a good looking girl. She, she has a hell of a knee lift. She can't do much else, but that knee lift is pretty. And <laughs> yeah. like I said, she's one of, we were just talking about Otis and I've been saying this for months. Her and Otis were in one of the biggest storylines of last year, 2019 going into last year. It ended up being one of the top matches at WrestleMania. And now Otis is never even talked about anymore. And then she's just jobbing out like every week. And then they put her with Dana Brooke, which I don't, I don't get that anyway. That's like, you might as well this. You might as well just open the back door and tell them both to kick, you know, kick rocks. Cause you're, right. you're basically destroying two careers at once. And it's just, I don't, I don't do this. This is like, this is the thing with WWE. It's just been lately. It's just, they don't care. Cause what they're going to do, like Mansoor, 49 and nothing. Oh, well, you know, people barely know who he is. So they won't be mad that he's, he, you know, he, he was undefeated instead of doing something special with it. He's done. Bet money, six months, he won't even be on the roster. No, he'll be on the roster. He won't be on television because they're going to need him whenever they go overseas. Right, right. He'll just be that overseas guy that, get, that gets called up. You know, it's like, oh, yeah, we're going to India. Bring up Mansoor. You know, we're going to whatever, you know. Uh, it just they have a lot of people like that. Like, look at uh, Umberto. They just brought him up. I, I thought they were going to do something cool with the whole Sheamus Open Challenge thing, which was use all these guys that you never use, that you never see on on the main roster, and, and you know have them job out to Sheamus. And like every week, you see Mansoor, you'll see uh, 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 I don't know Mojo Raleigh. I know he's not with the company anymore, but like all these people they, that you probably thought were fired. And you never saw, like you never see them on TV. Bring them out. Give them like a little bit of to shine. It's like, oh yeah, I remember this guy. He's actually good. Well, not only that, then, a, lot, and, a lot of these dudes are smaller than him. A lot of these guys are smaller than Sheamus, Mon Monsoor, yeah. Humberto Carrillo. What, like, why not do like a, a fun little gimmick where he's he's taking on all comers, but they're all cruiserweights, and then you mm -hmm. get you get them to shine and do all these crazy moves because you know Sheamus is a tank, and you know whether you like him or not, the guy's a hell of a wrestler. You know, like, and then he has a finisher that he can do out of nowhere. So you have these guys do all this stuff, make, you know, make them look good. And then bro kick them in that, like, you know, the next week. And then next, you know, next cruiserway, come on down, you know, the next week. It, it's, mm -hmm. it would be way more interesting than you bring out a guy. Only some of us really know him because we had the network. Mm -hmm. you know, and know him from NXT. And, uh, well, I never watched 205 Live. But from NXT, and I know him from the from the the Saudi Arabia shows, mm -hmm. him winning on those. You bring him out. You announce that he's forty nine and oh coming in into there. They 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 dude, they just did that guy dirty, and he's done. Yeah. Like that yeah. quick destroyed him. It's like Oscar uh, once she once she lost her WrestleMania, she just went on a losing streak. They had her you know jobbing out to James Ellsworth and Carmella. You know, yeah. it just went it just went downhill from here. It's going to be the same thing with this guy, and it's and it sucks. And uh, the Umberto, like, he came back out of obscurity. Like a lot of people don't even remember him barely. Like, yeah, oh, didn't he do something with Rey Mysterio once, and and that was it. And now he's just jobbing out the Sheamus. Well, they had they like, had him, they had him doing that whole thing too with uh, Andrade and Garza. You know, they had mm -hmm. they had all them doing those tag matches and like. I think Carrillo's related to Garza, if I'm right. I think they're cousins or whatever. And, mm -hmm. like, they could have built that up. They could have done anything with that. And instead, what, you got Garza, who has star written all over him with, with his looks. And, and that wing clipper is one of the dopest finishers in the business. Yeah. He's chasing Nia Jax around. How much are we going to do this whole thing that everybody's in love with the chick that every wrestling fan can't stand? Like, yeah. And it's not – yeah, it's because she sucks. She just sucks. She's awful. Yeah, it's not because she's doing a good job being a heel. It's just because she sucks as a wrestler and she's injuring people. Um, and now Garza's doing this thing where he's shoving roses up people's butts. Like, poor Drew Gulak, man. Jesus Christ, he have not been on TV in months. And now, uh, now he's known for getting a rose up his ass. Not like, only that, what was it? What, <laughs> what was it, six months ago? He was with Daniel Bryan and he was like, one of the guys headlining like SmackDown and then they trade him and he becomes a geek chasing for the 24 seven title. And now he has a rose in his butt. One of the yeah. best technical wrestlers in the world in the guys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it just 
there's some and I hate using this word because they're, they're called, there's something systemically wrong with WWE. Like from top to bottom, they they have some kind of whatever their system is. It needs to go away. It, it, it needs to be rebuilt. It needs to be restructured. You, you, there's too many talented guys. There's too much going on. They're making all the money in the world, but they could be making even more money if they actually cared. That's what blows my yeah. mind. And isn't that yeah. the, isn't that the, the whole thing about owning a business is making money? And yeah. if you make money, the wrestlers make money, then they, then they you know they're happy. Everybody's happy. I mean, yeah, these guys are making more money than they would anywhere else, except for maybe Japan or you know depending on their name, but. I'm like, dude, really? Is is it worth it going out there every week to like what? Throw tomatoes at Randy Orton, by the way, one of the best segments in the whole show. It Hi, was. That, that made me laugh. Hi, Randy. <laughs> <laughs> Just goes dude, that that, I gotta admit that they have that's got money written all over it. Mm -hmm. I mean, until until he turns on on Matt Riddle, and then it's even got more money written on it. I like them as a tag team. I, I'm actually enjoying that. It was the only thing besides and AJ and almost out there that I enjoyed is I think Matt Riddle and Randy Orton. Randy Orton has chemistry with so many dudes that's so subtle and people love to hate him because of his slow, slow style wrestling. Yeah. But that whole thing where he made him zip his mouth shut and with the key and he put his hand out, he had to put the key in his hand. <laughs> like, it was just like little, little goofy things like that, man. People forget or go a long way. Yeah. In, instead uh, of it's 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 entertaining um i just i just don't trust wwe to do anything good with it like, like you can tell this is like a little bit of randy orton like throwing some hey what if i did this what if i did this because he has the clout <laughs> that he can actually do that but um hopefully they're they're just not like you know all right it's been three weeks now we're breaking you guys up so we, you know the, this the story needs to go on for a little while uh, build this story up. Don't just be like, okay, well, you guys are going to wrestle on uh, WrestleMania well, when, Backlash, and that'll be it. When's, when's SummerSlam? SummerSlam's what, like August? August sometime, yeah. Your house is on fire, Mark. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome to the city. Um, <laughs> that's enough time to build a storyline. Yeah. You think about it, having... You know, May, April, I mean, May, June, July, and then maybe a week or two in August, depending on the date, because I haven't checked the date. But I, I think that could be a really good, you think you turn on them, Randy turns on somewhere like mid-June, or not mid-June, maybe like mid-July, and then you have like a three-week three, three week build to the pay-per-view. I, mm -hmm. I think it's SummerSlam, Riddle versus Randy Orton. Like, I, I, know, uh, I know Corey doesn't like the way Riddle throws his – those open hand strikes and some of his right. other moves. But I, I I think Riddle has a massive upside. He's built for WWE. His personality, his wrestling style, every he, he can do whatever he can do whatever they want him to do. And he's charismatic. He's I think he's got a huge upside to him. Yeah. Um I agree with some of what Corey says. You know, his execution of stuff is just not not very good uh you know some is some stuff's good some tough some stuff is not but if you go and look back at that match he had with sheamus at wrestlemania that was amazing that was one of the best matches on the card so yeah. the guy can work his ass off like it wasn't sheamus carrying him he can see it so you know it, it he can do it he can absolutely and with orton are you kidding me like that's 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 a no-brainer that's 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 going to be one of the, if they build it up to SummerSlam, then that'll be one of the best matches absolutely and i'm, at, and I'm actually looking forward to it because I, I think because like I said, Matt Riddle can adapt. You have Orton that does that real methodical, like beating you. Like Riddle can sell a move and then also turn it into a grinding match. I mean, it won't be an exciting WWE match, but I, I could mm -hmm. see this being really hard hitting and, and like a grinded out match. And uh, yeah. I said, you guys can, you know, people can talk about his execution, but man, I know a guy named John Cena that didn't really execute moves well. And <laughs> yeah. the guy was massive. Absolutely massive. <laughs> and the one thing is the one thing both of them have in common when John Cena walked in a ring with a Randy Orton, with an AJ Styles, with, with a Daniel Bryan, all of a sudden those moves just tweaked a little bit better. And he and everything just hit a little bit harder and a little bit faster. And it, those matches were awesome. So and it's it like a guy like Riddle is exactly what WWE need, needs right now. They also need Keith Lee, whoever the yeah. hell he is. 
Oh, speaking about dropping the ball. Uh, but let me do that. I think they moved him down to NXT, but I wanted to talk about NXT a little bit. I've been seeing promos for something called the Diamond Mine. Do you know anything about this? On NXT, um, they, they did a promo last week. I think they did one the week before as well. Uh, I'm not sure. It looks like a like a big like a UFC type of thing. So I don't know if they're building a new tag team or if this is going to be like a segment, like a Raw Underground type of thing, but on NXT. So I don't know what's happening. Uh, possible. Uh, the problem is, uh, yeah. Uh, let's see. I'm just looking at stuff. I have no no clue about it, and I apologize. I like it. I I took a week off last week of NXT. I just needed a break after the two takeovers, yeah. like the, the you know the two days of takeover, and then I just I was having trouble getting into it. Besides, um. As much as I love Johnny Gargano, I think they're going a little too comical with the way now, and it, it can it can be annoying. It can be annoying sometimes, even though uh, uh, Bronson still looks great. Uh, yeah. And uh, what was I going to say? What is his name? Uh, why am I blanking out his name? To the moon. Oh, every, uh, Cameron Grimes. Every time Cameron Grimes is on the screen, I am in absolute heaven. I I love that man. Yeah, me too. Like, he's the best. <laughs> Him walking into a high end watch star a store asking for the best watch they got, just like white trash as hell. Like he doesn't even yeah. know watches at all. <laughs> like... Yeah, that was uh, that was really cool. Well, that was going to be my who wins wrestling. So let's get into that, shall we? <laughs> let's do that real quick so I can talk about it. Ow. Who wins wrestling? Blah 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 blah. Sorry, I got a I got attacked by a cat. As I was in the middle of doing it. God damn it. <laughs> um, yeah, man. Uh, do you have a human wrestling before I get into mine? I'm going. Uh, I was thinking almost, but I, I have to go. There's there's no way you cannot go with him. It's Kenny Omega. It, yeah. It's like the the guy who was considered the best, the, what, what do you call him, the bout, whatever. Like he was, He's one of the best wrestlers in the world, like hands down. And they, they kind of like did a slow burn with him on – on NX on uh, AEW and everybody was getting angry about it, like why isn't he like the world title holder? Why? Is it? And now you see why they did this slow burn and then turn him into this kind of douche character that he's playing right now, which is perfect. And him and uh, uh, what's his name? Why am I going to call him Cyrus? <laughs> um, the Don Cows. Him and Don Cows are fantastic together. They got they got the Good Brothers with them, and. It's just an unstoppable, entertaining group of guys with, with Kenny Mega, you know, as a front man with, with all the belts. It's And like I said, this opens up avenues to have AAA impact people on AEW and Kenny Omega and vice, vice versa on their shows. It's it's a win-win for everybody involved in this. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I can't see it not getting better from here like it it seems like they have a uh, a decent plan uh or at least even if they don't have a plan like they what they're doing right now is is gold and, and uh they seem to know it's gold so um I, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. i want to see what what else they uh what else they do with this um my who wins wrestling uh like i was talking about before was uh was cameron grimes um that promo that he did on nxt with the watch tour was great um, and Ted DiBiase shows up out of nowhere, the million dollar man, uh, and laughs right in his face, which was absolutely great. I hope uh, there was some podcast that DiBiase was on. I think it was either Mark Henry or Booker T, one of one of, one of their podcasts. Um, I and, listened to neither. <laughs> to neither. <laughs> I didn't hear it myself. I just heard it reported. But uh, DiBiase was on there and he's saying that uh, he was going to be doing this uh with with cameron grimes for a little while now so i'm looking forward to whatever that turns into uh if it's just cameron grimes getting more and more uh humiliated as it goes through or uh if dibiase starts managing somebody again that'd be awesome uh and uh and and they have a match it'd be it'd be great um i'm really looking forward to it i love the hell out of dibiase and cameron grimes is just gold uh anytime he comes on like you were saying before it's just um it's hilarious and it, it all makes sense and it's all brilliant and uh, I, I can't wait to see more of it. And we uh, I was gonna say doesn't doesn't AEW have their um, 
You want to run through it real quick? Uh, don't they have their major? Uh, do you know what it's called? <laughs> uh, is it Rev Revolution? Uh, is that what it is, or did that already happen? Blood and Guts. Oh, Blood and Guts, okay. Yeah, I, I was going to say, it, do we have a card for it yet? Uh, let me take a look here. Sorry, I wasn't prepared. I didn't know this was on its way. Uh, I think it's this here. Wednesday. Is this? No, this was. I mean, we have we definitely had the Inner Circle <laughs> versus Pinnacle, and basically the first their version of War Games. So I'm actually looking forward to seeing how they how they do it. Uh, it it's basically War Games. That's that's what they're, it really? is. Yeah, I I don't know how they're going to get around it compared to WWE. Like if they so they don't get sued. <laughs> <laughs> two right, rings, it's see. two rings, man. One member from each faction for five minutes. This is war games. Yeah, teams wow. Turn. In two minute intervals, teams will have a new one for an advantage. Hmm. That's the uh, inner circle and um. And the pinnacle. And, and the pinnacle, yeah. Wow. Okay, they call it a blood and guts match. Wow. Real clever. <laughs> uh, and you have uh, Kenny Omega and um, uh, 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 Nakazawa versus yeah. Moxley and Kingston. That's awesome. It's going to be a fun it's match. Sound like a, yeah. Uh, Britt Baker versus TBA. Uh, SoCal on Center versus Jurassic Express versus Varsity Blondes versus The Acclaimed. That is probably going to be a mess, but uh, one of those awesome messes that we don't really... <laughs> it, dude, uh, it, hard to call, but uh, but looking good at the same time. Yeah, man, we got a we got a lot of uh, awesome matches. There's Cody Rhodes versus QT Marshall. All right, yeah, and this is happening. Where where is this? This is on um, tomorrow. It's on Fight TV. Is it tomorrow? It is May fifth, eight o'clock. Yeah. Wow. All right. Uh, it says fans outside the U.S. can watch it on Fight TV. And uh, yeah, we're gonna. Be one of the lucky people that uh, get to actually watch it uh, live as it happens at eight o'clock. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta TV. really, I gotta really try harder to get into. I because I, I think with the lack of entertainment WWE has been putting out, I, yeah. I think, I think we need to start investing more in what AEW is doing. Uh, it's just one of those weird things where like I work every Wednesday night, and I wasn't even seeing NXT. I think NXT is on right now. But I only have the yeah. Peacock Network, which I'm not even sure if I can watch it live on Peacock, like Raw or SmackDown, where I can't watch it live at all. Even though USA owns the channel, or the company, the parent company USA owns the channel, I still can't watch it live unless I watch it on Twitch. <laughs> mm. And that's just annoying. <laughs> yeah. Oh man! All right. Well, let's start wrapping up the show here, Mark. Do you have anything? Uh, anything going on? Anything you want to plug? Dogecoin's going to the moon. Going to the moon. <laughs> to the moon, baby. <laughs> well, you know that's exactly what he's built. That's what he's. That's what his character's built on. Yeah. It all came from. It all came from Dogecoin. And GameStop that's, stock. That's what it came from. Is this? <laughs> um, send, send me money for more Dogecoin. Uh, I have nothing going on. Uh, the other podcast that I've been helping out, uh, like I said, there are a bunch of industry guys. So they're kind of a mess and they showed up last week. They never did the show on Monday. So they showed up in my bar, my bar last week when I didn't get done till midnight and wanted to come over to my house and drink and do the show. So I said no. And then we were supposed to do the show last night and one of the guys canceled last minute. So what did, what did your cat get now? Uh, that's, I don't even know. She's chasing something around. There's a plastic something. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I got nothing going on, man. I'm just, I'm just waiting to see how Elon Musk on Saturday Night Live, how much money I make off Doge after that. There you go. I'm trying to be a dot com millionaire, kids. <laughs> it's only gonna go up from here. I'm telling you. Um, what do I got going on? Uh, check out uh, this and every other episode of Russell Rock on RussellRock.com. Uh, there you can hear the podcast. You can watch the podcast like here on YouTube. Um, check us out on the podcast app, wherever you get to podcasts. 
Make sure you hit subscribe. Check us out on the YouTubes at tinyurl.com slash YouTube Rick Connor. That's C-O-N-N-O-R. Subscribe to it there. You can see a bunch of wrestling matches as well, like the show that we were talking about earlier where Corey just won the DCW No Women's Championship. That's going to be up very soon. So uh, make sure you check that out. And I think that's it. I think that's all I plug, and that's all I'm going to plug. So there we go. Uh, that'll be it, about it for this episode of Ross Rock. I'm Rick Connor. Mark Hallmacher. And let's take it out like we always do with Mr. Nick Burke. It's so hard to say goodbye to yesterday. Join us again for another episode of Rassle Rock. This has been Jay Davis speaking.